Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. So as you guys know, those individuals who have been a part of my channel for a while, it is December, which means we are wrapping up old stories that we haven't finished yet. And we are, uh, we're covering the last night on earth, the end of book one. <laughs> we covered the first two chapters and then never finished the rest. And, uh, and that's a problem because especially because of the fact that part three comes out in like 10 days. So, uh, yeah, we kind of need to cover this. Uh, so getting into Batman or I guess finishing up book one of Batman last night on earth. So here's a deal here. All right. Here's a crazy thing about this. This was basically basically a story kind of playing catch up here this is a story where batman just kind of woke up right like in this sort of asylum this is this crazy situation where we didn't know if batman was sane or insane uh, and it was kind of this idea that it had been a sort of repeating process over and over and over again and then ultimately he left went out into the world and then we basically learned that the world had essentially gone to pot right we were in like some kind of post-apocalyptic landscape he ultimately stumbled across the joker's head in a jar it was crazy things like that the idea here is that we didn't know exactly what was going on all we knew was that things had seemingly gone south and so what we ended up getting was basically batman and joker kind of going forward to whatever future happened you know they happen to be having to be walking into and so what this does is it picks up with the idea that as soon as they make their way towards a, a town of sorts you know batman's still in this straight jacket that they're ultimately beset upon by all these individuals who are wielding green lantern rings but don't really have any willpower now here's a crazy thing about it right like initially and, and on the surface when it comes to a green lantern you have to be able to have willpower to use the ring right if you don't have enough willpower it's just a ring on your finger you can't really do anything with it right like willpower power the ring and so the result of this is that under normal circumstances these individuals whoever they are uh who were almost just kind of like in a zombified state would not be able to wield the rings but the way this worked out is that it's somewhere along the line then in this post-apocalyptic landscape mogo showed up on earth now we can largely assume that mogo was called by the green lanterns of earth so like kyle rayner and guy gardner and john stewart and hal jordan and ultimately mogo was basically killed now the way it's explained by the joker mogo was quote unquote leached by brainiac what that means we don't fully know presumably brainiac just suck the life energy out of out of mogo but we don't really know to what ends instead what ended up happening is that with the deaths of these green lanterns and we only see a few of them we only see three right so we can basically just kind of go with the fact that there were only a handful here on earth that the rings basically went out to to grab new bearers and presumably ended up bonding to normal humans but they lacked the willpower to use them and so with no real guiding force here with the green lantern central power battery basically destroyed or at least this massive battery being destroyed what it did is it, it, it really kind of led to a scenario where the rings went awry now again it's kind of strange here because we don't normally see it that way, right? Like a ring would actually tell a person, you know, you don't have the willpower to use me and it would leave and go find somebody else. But what we're seeing here is a landscape where presumably everybody's dead, right? So whatever individuals these are, whatever whatever they were capable of, this just kind of these rings that seem to be going without any real leadership or direction and just sort of running a ride. That's what makes it so kind of crazy, right? That's what makes it so bonkers is because it's, it's something that we don't really normally see here. Now, of course, Batman does his best to kind of, you know, stay out of the fray with these guys and not really kill anybody. But instead of being destroyed, he's ultimately rescued by Vixen, uh, who ends up, of course, grabbing him and yanking him into an invisible truck. Now, of course, those of you guys who are unfamiliar with Vixen, she taps into the red, which is basically the animal equivalent of the green, the power that, uh, that the Swamp Thing uses. Essentially, she can channel the abilities of animals, but ultimately, she's there alongside Poison Ivy and a handful of others, which begs the question, why are heroes and villains working together, which is something we don't normally see. And so, Batman essentially just kind of picks up inside this cave, inside this giant geode, alongside Supergirl uh, with Poison Ivy and Vixen, and it's, it's kind of wild to see, because in some Suddenly, Wonder Woman makes her appearance, uh, carrying the, the helmet of Dr. Fate, only for us to find out magic is, is, is long gone. Magic's basically dead. And so whatever's happened on this world, pretty much all the heroes and all the villains are essentially gone. And it's it's, it's kind of wild, right? I mean, what, what you see here is really what you get. There really isn't anybody left. Like, it's all basically kind of dashed to pieces. And so when the question is asked, how did this world end up the way it is? We finally get this explanation here. It's not super in-depth. Scott Snyder kind of teases us, but we get this explanation where Wonder Woman basically ends up saying, that there was this great big huge debate that took place between Lex Luthor and Superman. And in this debate, Lex Luthor seemingly convinced the world that like superheroes aren't needed right now. This is interesting. And this is actually one of the coolest takes on Lex Luthor. See, this is the reason why I always tell you guys, villains are usually more interesting than the heroes. And this is perfectly in line with something that Lex Luthor would do, right? Lex Luthor's greatest weapon is his mind. Arguably, he's the smartest person on earth. I wanna say it kind of goes back and forth between himself and, and Batman, sometimes uh, Mr. Terrific, but for the most part, Part, it's it's really just kind of like you know Lex Luthor and Batman in terms of the smartest people in the world with regards to like normal humans and so as a result of that when he engages.
engaged in this debate, he essentially convinced the world, you don't really need superheroes anymore. Like you don't need superheroes to protect you, that there's no real basis for them. And where initially the victory seemed to go to Luther, uh, humanity ended up turning on villains as well. And so humanity kind of took it into their own hands. Now, this is intriguing. And I find this really cool. I find this really, really interesting here, right? The notion that humanity would sit down one day and say, yeah, you're right. We don't need heroes. Like we're just going to basically take over and, and we're going to eliminate heroes and villains. Now, the issue that you run into in any scenario like this, because it looks like a massive war broke out between all the heroes and the villains, possibly against humanity, whatever the case happened to be, uh, that a massive conflict broke out. And what it led, what it led to was this complete and total breakdown of organized society throughout the world or within the, just the United States. We're not really given a definitive answer. We're really kind of told it's the world, but we only get it within the confines and the view of, of Batman. So it's like, you know, it's, it's one of these things where I guess I could kind of go either way, especially because everything in the story is so crazy. But what ended up happening here is with the fall of, of society, you ended up getting kind of like this rise of petty warlords. And so because of that, it was, it looks like it's one of these scenarios where humanity really just, just seemed to like cast off superheroes and villains with no thought to what came next. And so without any real heroes and villains, then it suddenly turned into individuals who were vying for power. And so with this sort of, you know, de uh, breaking down and, and complete degradation of society, you got this rise of like strong men and petty warlords all over the place who were trying to vie for power and trying to control their own little sections of the country, which ultimately led to the rise of this villain called Omega. Now for Omega, it's very much a mystery here, right? Like Omega's wielding the head of Darkseid, right? So whoever it is seems to be powerful enough to have killed Darkseid, but you're talking about like the deaths of magic wielders in DC. You're talking about the deaths of pretty much all the superheroes minus a handful. Uh, the question remains like, where is Superman? You know, for those of you guys who are, are ahead of this, please don't spoil anything. But the question is like, where's Superman? I mean, you know, it's 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 all these, these interesting scenarios. I mean, Superman is perceived to have been dead, right? That's the indication from what Wonder Woman says. Superman's dead and gone. Like he's, he's out of the picture now. And it's really kind of interesting here because the question is like, well, what happened? Like, like, how could this have happened? We end up learning that like Batman was a part of it. You know, that, that, that from what Wonder Woman says, Batman's the one who killed the world. It's kind of wild, you know, in, in this, this whole scenario, the Batman seems to have been the cause, or at least seems to have been a major figure in the death of the world. And so what she basically says here, and this is really one of the darker elements of the story. What she says here is that, that Wonder Woman has really kind of facilitated a deal between Hades and herself. And what this would do is it would allow all those, you know, whatever individuals are left, a hundred thousand people who are basically left that are, that are residing alongside Wonder Wonder Woman to essentially travel deeper and into the realm of Hades where there's virtually no light whatsoever. Uh, and they would imagine that they'd be able to attain some little bit of light, but essentially they would just be individuals living in like, you know, pitch black caves down below and, and, you know, the core of the earth kind of in the realm of Hades itself. And so it's a, it's a really bleak and dark outcome here, right? Like it's, it's one of these things where, where Snyder's like, yeah, like there's no, there's no good future here. There's no real good place for them to go. The world's dead, right? I mean, the world is essentially conquered and, and that's basically it. And, and it's kind of nuts because Omega leads that section but like humanity as they're being found or essentially being either eradicated or being forced into the into the realm of Omega because he basically managed to discover the anti-life equation and is using it to dominate people, right? So living down in, in the realm of Hades where there's virtually no light and this pitch black environment seems to be a better alternative than living on the surface. And I would say probably not, right? I mean, if you have to live your life in such a, such a degree, it might be better to just kind of go out swinging, right? I mean, just go up to the surface and, and take your chances and hope for the best. <laughs> but it, it's kind of a crazy thing because what she says is the world will always need a Batman. This place always needs Batman. We need your mind. We need your, your, your ingenuity. We need you here with us. And so she basically reveals to him, of course, the Batman suit. And it's one of these funny things, because as we know from the, the previous stories, this version of Batman is not really Batman, right? It's a clone that's constantly created over the years, over time, because every generation would need a Batman. You know, Bruce Wayne sat down one day and realized that, that the time would come when he would no longer be able to be Batman, whether because he was killed prematurely or because he was too old to fight or whatever the case is. But like every generation would need a Batman. And so kind of engine engineering these clones more or less of himself that had all of his resources, abilities, his mind, so on and so forth, could continue his role as Batman, presumably until the end of time. And that's the response of her is like, we let Alfred go through with that because we felt bad for him, but like, you're here now and you should stay here with us. And the response of Bruce is like, that's ridiculous though. Like to stay, to go down to the realm of Hades where there's like no light whatsoever to lead them into some place where it's just darkness and despair. Like, how can that possibly be better than living on the surface? And the response of Wonder Woman is, well, because we're not guaranteed to die, but is it any real measure of a life at all? Like, is it any real, real world to live in? And so ultimately what ends up happening here in, in really kind of a cool moment here, what ends up happening is Batman, of course, has a bit of a conversation with the Joker and a conversation is a loose term. Joker keeps trying to retell this joke over and over again and keeps forgetting it. And so basically he says like, it's time for us to go. Wonder Woman basically shows up, you know, to where Batman was supposed to be resting only to find out that Bruce Wayne essentially left. He took the back suit, he left the area and is basically just kind of out there, right? Just sort of out there going back out into the world with the Joker, presumably to try to save it or to try to do something to fix it. But all 
indications point to the fact that there is no fixing this world. This world is dead, it's gone, it's beyond hope. It's cool. This is a really, really amazing story. But with that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this video to an end. If you are new here to Comments Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like, and I will catch you all later. Peace. All right, so as promised, our shout outs for the producers of the Comics Explained videos, our patrons. I wanna give a shout out to Jason C, Austin S, Jason S, Austin H, Philip, and Austin B. We have a lot of Austins in our Patreon, <laughs> as well as Genosis916. Genosis didn't give us a first and last name, so we kind of had to roll with it. I didn't mention your all's last names, but I want to say thank you to you all. By the way, your Rob Corps rings should be on their way. For our Honor Guard members of the Rob Corps, for these special patrons, your custom Rob Corps rings should be on their way. They're being shipped to me. After that, I will have them shipped to you. Stay tuned, keep your eye on Patreon and your messages, and you will hear about them coming to you. Thank you.